I turned off my space heater for you guys. That is love. Hello everybody, I'm Roxy and this is Friend with Yes. How are you doing? I am feeling very tired these days. I don't know why. I think it's because I do a lot of things in the span of a day and then every time that I'm resting I feel like I should be doing something else but that doesn't make any sense. It's just there is no separation between what I should be doing and what I'm doing for rest. I don't know. It's just weird. It's weird times, guys. Plus, I think I might be getting sick, which is not good. Is anyone else feeling like this? Please comment down below. Today, I want to tell you about the books that I'll be reading in July. This wrap-up TBR system it's the other way around, right? TBR wrap-up system has been working great for me so far. It's really helped me focus my reading. It hasn't felt prohibitive. And it's also great because a lot of times on my TBRs, people would comment, oh, I really want to see what you think of this book. And I will try to prioritize and get to that book. And that is also awesome. So I'm going to try and keep this up. That said, there are a couple of books that I didn't get to in July, in June and I want to read in July. I'm not going to talk a lot about these here, actually nothing, so if you want to know what the little I know about them, you can go check out my June TBR, link down below and in the eye as always. So the first one is Ian Forster's Maurice, then we have Evelyn Wolf's Scoop, this is a bind up of all his novels, Scoop I think is actually quite short, and then two nonfiction books, one that I have already started, which is Deborah Davis' Stropolis. I might finish this before July, rolls around but just to be on the safe side I wanted to include it in my July TBR and then one that actually I started in May and I want to make a priority right now is Tim Blanning's The Triumph of Music this is an edition in Spanish the thing is that although it's small it's actually super heavy um, because the pages are so thick and heavy and that's nice they feel very nice but this is not a laying down book, especially because my hands hurt all the time now. And I also want to finish an ebook called Great Pianists on Piano Playing. This is kind of a collection of interviews. I've read a few, but I haven't finished it. And I do want to get to that. I might also want to get to Speaking Piano by Susan Tolls, which I haven't even opened. It's an ebook. But I, yeah, I, if I'm feeling like it, I might get to those essays. Then three books that I'll definitely get to Two of them are for the podcast I have in Spanish with my friend Danny, who was actually in my Little Free Library video. You can check out that down below as well. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Very excited. This is, I think, Sylvia Plath's only novel. And I know it's a lot about mental health. <laughs> That's what I know. And it's a coming of age story. And then this is a reread of Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secret of the Universe by Benjamin Alire Science. Yes, it is YA. I used to love this book. It really moved me and I've been terrified to read it ever since. This is about two best friends that hang out during the summer and they discover themselves and like they are trying to figure out what does it mean to live and to find yourself? They are both very different, which is what I appreciated from it. Dante is very open and straightforward and Aristotle is much more guarded. They come from different f families and that's also very important. If this is not even half as good as I remember, I am going to cry. And then this book is back. Remember how I read The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes last month? Well, no? Then you can check out my wrap up down below. This is a bind up. It also includes The Sign of Four and The Study in Scarlet. And I'm going to be reading The Study in Scarlet. And it's going to be a buddy read, so I'm very excited. I'm very new to buddy reads. I guess the podcast counts as buddy reads in a way. But we make it a point not to talk about the books before. <laughs> but yeah, I'm very excited. I really enjoyed The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I'm excited to see where it all began. And now the rest of these are basically options. The first one I want to tell you about is Lady Susan by Jane Austen, in case you're not aware of. Jane Austen July is just around the corner. It's a month-long readathon hosted by Katie from Books and Things. You can uh, check her out down below. For some reason, I can never participate. July is supposed to be a vacation month for me, but there is always something going on. Well, isn't there always? In any case, I had a lot of plans for Jane Austen July, but 
I discovered for whatever reason that I'm not exactly in a Jane Austen mood. I was actually going to read Sense and Sensibility, which would be a reread, Mansfield Park first time, and then that would make it so I read the main six novels and I could read What Matters in Jane Austen by, I forget, but I'll put up the cover. Then I was just like, I don't think I'm going to read all these Jane Austen right now, but I still want to read Lady Susan, which is an epistolary novel. I also want to watch the movie. If this prompts me to pick up more Jane Austen, I might read Persuasion since it's on the same book. I also want to check out The Beautiful Cassandra. Supposedly Jane Austen's juvenilia is very fun and like very scandalous and I'm very excited. I also have a short story anthology. I've been loving my anthologies this year. It's just so great to like sit down for an hour or two and read a couple of short stories or essays or whatever. So I want to keep that up and I want to check out The Snow Queen and other winter tales. This is a wonderful um, Barnes and Nobles letter bound. I bought this ages ago because I love the Russian film, The Snow Queen. I used to watch that on VHS. I don't know how it came to my home. I mean, my mom got them. Probably she got them at the supermarket, but they are so random. I had almost completely forgotten about them until suddenly they came back a couple of years ago to my mind and I was like, all right, yeah, the Snow Queen. And this also has a lot of other stories and it's not just the classics of fairy tales. So I'm very excited, actually. I wanna take this time to just discuss. This is a very chatty video, but I hope you enjoy it. I have become a seasonal reader, which is something I've always admired, but I've never been. I feel like before, because stuff was always happening, my mood was determined by the stuff that I was doing or the stuff that I was reading for college or for work or whatever. But now that I'm confined <laughs> to the apartment, I feel like I feel the seasons even more. And that's a bit weird because I'm not in the outside, but because nothing else is kind of going on, the outside is having more power on my mood. I don't know, it's odd. Does anyone relate to this at all? <laughs> Please do let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm just crazy, I don't know. It's just, it's been a long time quarantined and we have heavy quarantine guys, so. <sighs> Thelma Lagerlöf the saga of Gustav Berling. This is a Swedish classic that I was recommended by a lovely bookseller at Mr. B's Emporium of Reading Delights in Bath. She's also the host of the Mr. B's podcast. I'll link it down below because I adore that podcast. This is about a defrocked priest and actually Selma Lagerlöf was I don't know if the first woman to win the Nobel, but she's like up there. I had no idea about her before Jess introduced her to me and I really want to read this. Yeah, it's supposed to be very introspective and very existentialist and dark and I am in the mood for that. Oh, I forgot to mention this is translated by Paul Norlin. Sometimes I forget, but I'm trying to make a point of always mentioning the translators of my editions. So yeah, season reading. <laughs> Then I want to tell you about the Russian classic Dead Souls by Nikola Gogol. This is supposed to be fabulous, very dark and actually kind of funny. It's about a guy who deals in dead souls. I am so in the mood for Russian literature. I'm going to write a blog post about it. I'm going to talk about like my TBR and asking for recommendations. So you'll be able to check that out as soon as it's up. But before, still check out my blog. Anyways, Dead Souls translated by Richard P. Pivir, Pivar and Larissa Volokonsky. Oh, Volokonsky. Yeah, sorry for butchering that. Then something completely different. Uh, Matilda by Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl does have a bit of a dark humor that I really appreciate and I'm in the mood. Then another like feel good sort of read, History of Magic, um, the Spellbinding Companion to the British Library Exhibition by Bloomsbury. This just is going to be amazing. I of course couldn't attend the exhibition, but I have the book. Then I have a poetry collection, Ariel by Sylvia Plath. Since I'm reading The Bell Jar, I thought Ariel would be a good companion. I read some Sylvia Plath poetry. I like it. I haven't found yet a poem that I feel like it's mind blowing, but I'm very excited. They say this is actually her best collection. What to Listen For in Music by Aaron Copland. I talked about this in my birthday book haul. You can check that out down below. I'm just very excited to learn. Finally, two essay collections, although quite different. One is 
Treasure Palaces, Great Writers Visit Great Museums, edited by Maggie Ferguson. Literally great writers, like whether you like them or not, it's not the point, but they are like very famous writers. I'm very excited because Ali Smith is in here, but also Roddy Doyle, Julian Barnes, Alan Hollinghurst, and Patchett, etc. etc. I am missing museums. I am really missing the outside this month. I don't know if this is going to make me feel better or worse. I'm hoping for better. And then I have White Girls by Hilton Els. This was published in 2013 and won the Pulitzer. I became aware of this book because I read a lit hub, I think, article where they listed the best essay collections of, I want to say, the past decade. But I gotta say, I was kind of put off by the title just because I really resist calling women girls. But yeah, apart from that, like here it says, White Girls is about, among other things, blackness, queerness, movies, Brooklyn, love, and the loss of love, AIDS, passion, Basquiat, Capote, philosophy, porn, Eminem, Louise Brooks, Michael Jackson. So it seems like a Venn diagram of everything I enjoy reading about. So I'm actually very excited to get to this. And that's it. Do I feel like this is achievable or not? Oh, I forgot the ebooks. Damn. Okay, yeah, I want to get to three ebooks. One is Schubert's Winter Journey, Anatomy of an Obsession by Ian Borstrich. It's about Schubert, I guess, and retracing some of his life and his music. I really like Schubert. I remember I discovered him because I went to see a pianist who played mostly Schubert and I really, really liked how... And yeah, even though I don't know a lot about Schubert and I don't listen to the, him that much, I'm actually hoping this book will guide me a little bit more or like inspire me to listen to more Schubert. Then I have Bach Music in the Castle of Heaven by John Elliott Gardiner. And again, I've always appreciated Bach's music, but I only knew the most famous pieces, but I never really listened to it that much. But then as soon as I started learning a bit more about music, of course he popped up because he's one of the most important composers of the entire history of Western music. So I'm just curious to know more. And remember I read something of his art by Horatio Clare, link down below to the wrap up where I mentioned that I really enjoyed it and it really inspired me to learn more. Finally, I need to get closer to my computer to read this, sorry. Who knew? Answers in Questions About Classical Music You Never Thought to Ask by Robert Curieta or Curiet. This is such a poorly thought out video. I should write the titles of the ebooks on a separate sheet so I can read them here, but I never do. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know what to expect about this book. I don't know if it's classical music itself or it's about the composers or about playing instruments or a bit of everything. I don't know where the questions came from, but actually all of that just makes me want to read it more and see for myself what kind of questions I never thought to ask. So yeah, those are all the books that I want to read in July. I feel like now the ambition level has dialed up a bit. See you in the next video. I'm sorry this video was so rambly, but I enjoyed filming it. And you know, comment down below. I always ask you a bunch of questions. Just interact with me. I really enjoy your comments. And if you don't want to do that here, you can find me on Twitter and Bookstagram. So yeah, I check out my vlog and yeah, have fun reading. Okay, now see you next time.